Yo, what is up there guys, Ed the Wiz back at it again for another Kingdom Hearts video discussion right here, right now. So let's get right to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next gen is officially here. And what can I say? It's pretty cool, you know. We've got faster load times thanks to the SSD drive, better locked in frames. But the one thing that really stands out to me without a doubt has to be the DualSense controller's haptic feedback on the PlayStation 5 controller, which is something that you really, really need to experience for yourself because trying to describe it ugh, really does not do it any justice at all. However, if you have a PS5, then you already know how cool of a feature it really is, truly engaging the player to connect with the world itself. From the smallest details to more largely noticeable things, the best way to describe it would be exactly as it's called. You feel the feedback that the character is feeling from the game to the controller, such as soft steps of walking on sand to simply being pushed aside from large gusts of wind, or unleashing a powerful blast. After messing around with the controller myself with games such as Spider-Man Miles Morales and Astro's Playroom, I can see lots of potential for the feature to be work out wonderfully for the Kingdom Hearts series. Unfortunately though, we might not see these cool features till probably later down the line with Kingdom Hearts 4. Namora did make a comment saying that we probably won't see a Kingdom Hearts game in next-gen consoles till at least after the console's first year lifespan. We do know that we are going to be getting something pretty big in 2020 for the 20th anniversary for the Kingdom Hearts series, which could be a new game, it could be a remastered remake of Union Cross, or even a Disney Plus series. Now, Square already said that, you know, they would be supporting cross-platform, so there would be last-gen and new-gen versions of games. So, if the big surprise is a new game, I'd expect that maybe there might be an Xbox or PS5 upgrade, but it would probably just take advantage of the speed and frames not so much the controller, as the haptic feedback is a new thing and, and trying to apply everything that that controller can do, especially with all the things that Kingdom Hearts has to offer, could take a little bit more time with development. So definitely later down the road, I can see them taking full advantage of what the controller has to offer. After all, the Kingdom Hearts series is no stranger when it comes to taking advantage of what systems have to offer. Remember Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance? I think that would be a perfect example with of course them using the the 3DS's 3D feature and using the bottom touch screen to cut chains and interact with our dream eaters. Ah, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of miss uh, petting my uh, giant T-Rex over there. I'm gonna have to go ahead and pay the 3DS a little visit. But we've even had little interactions within Kingdom Hearts 3 during the final battle with Xehanort where Sora got knocked down and we heard Goofy and Donald's voices coming from the controller. And when you press the button, it kind of matched with the controller, giving us that little vibration sound to match the heartbeat, eventually bringing back Sora to his senses. Not gonna lie, that was such a cool and unique experience that I won't ever forget it and it really just had me engaged with the scene you know your boys donald and goofy coming to sora's aid <laughs> It was beautiful, but trust me when I say the haptic feedback is going to be a game changer. There is so much stuff that goes on in the Kingdom Hearts games that honestly the amount of things that they can do is kind of nuts. Something as simple as opening up a chest could be applied to the controller. Here are some more ways I think the Kingdom Hearts series can make use of the haptic feedback. Number one, the world. Let's be honest, the worlds are one of the biggest parts within the Kingdom Hearts series, and the best part is how each world has its own unique terrain and setting depending on where we are. We could make use of its environments. Let's say we get a Bugs Life world for example. Maybe there could be a mini game with Sora riding on the dandelion piece and we could blow into the controller to keep him afloat. Or if we got a hopper boss fight, we could have the dripping effects of the rain on the controller which was something that was in the level of Astrobots and let me tell you it actually felt like rain was falling on my hands. I'm telling you this thing is crazy. It has a mind of its own. I'm honestly afraid this thing is going to turn to Ultron, this controller over here. Let's say we go back to Agrabah and venture into the desert, we could actually feel Sora's footsteps as he walks against the sand, thanks to, of course, the haptic feedback. Or say we go back to the Pirates of the Caribbean world. I can see the gusts of winds being felt if we take control of the pirate ship, or maybe how Sora's steps would be a lot more louder and abrupt since he would be walking on wood since he's on a pirate ship. Let's say we go to a forest area 
like from the Jungle Book or the Brave World, the soft rippling brushing effects of walking through the grass could be applied to the controller. Or let's say Big Hero 6 makes a return or we go into the Marvel world. We could feel the flow motion sensation of the rails that Sora rides upon, which would be a smooth type of sensation or feel the icy rockety effects from Aqua riding against her icy spell. Worlds have so much going on for them that it's crazy. Next of course would be magic, which is also a big part of the Kingdom Hearts series. And there are so many types of magic that I can imagine every time a character does thunder. The controller will give us that quick shake feeling and water would give us more of a bounce when the attack lands and makes a big splash. I'm sure the gummy ship will eventually return. And when we do those little speed boosts, I can see the controller giving us that little bit of abrupt rush feeling to it as if like, you know, we were actually inside the gummy ship. I can picture the controller giving off quick bump shocky effects if we do like a link command with Donald unleashing the fireworks. Keyblade transformations were a big part of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now whether they will return or not, I mean who really knows, but I can picture every time we do a transformation, depending on what type of Keyblade we have, we will get a different sensation when it transforms. For example, like you know with the monsters in Keyblade, we'd probably get more of a clanky feeling to it, as opposed to using the Ever After Keyblade, which would have a much more passive soft touch to it. Let's not also forget that blocking is a thing in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I always seem to forget that till like the final final battle, but I'm pretty sure we can get a feeling sensation to every time Sora successfully blocks or maybe counters an attack. And another thing that Sora always does is dodge roll. Like Sora's always going up against this pavement. I could totally see them giving us that feedback. Wow, Kingdom Hearts 4 is really going to make us feel like Sora. I know that's kind of an ongoing joke, but at this point, yeah, it's actually going to end up being like that. Honestly, guys, there are loads of possibilities when it comes to getting the feedback of Sora and crew that I just pray Square will go all out with it. So guys, that is basically going to be it for this video. Honestly, I could probably ramble on some more and give more examples, but I think you guys got a general idea as to what the feedback can do within the Kingdom Hearts series. So guys, I want to know in the comment section below is, you know, A, do you think Square will make use of the haptic feedback on the PS5 controller? And what are some ways you think that the haptic feedback can be used to show off Kingdom Hearts? So guys, leave all your comments in the comment section below if you like the video make sure to give it a big massive thumbs up as it helps me and the channel out quite immensely if you aren't already you can follow me on my twitter same thing as my youtube channel which is ed the Wiz. i am also on instagram which is matt swag one two three four five where i post all the good stuff discord link will be in the description below so until next time guys i'm gonna go ahead and say bye pal we'll see you soon